Hello everyone, my friends call me Boz or Bozza. Uh, I'm a big camera guy and today I'm going to talk about the Roliflex twin lens reflex, the model GX and I have it right here. Um, gorgeous camera, medium format, twin lens reflex. Now, those that know this particular um, type of camera will know that this is not Roliflex. This is actually Hasselblad. This is a prism finder, the, the PME90 from Hasselblad. Now, you can buy an adapter from Bayer Photo in Germany. Uh, I will put the web address in the video so that you can see it. Go online and get yourself one. Now, the adapter is real simple to install. You slide off the waist level viewfinder, slide on the adapter, and then attach this. Also slides on. It's a wonderful combination. The very bright prism finder will help you focus. Um, you know, you'll study the, the image in the viewfinder more. The, the, the focusing is just amazing. It's much faster and easier. This uh, um, part here, will actually rotate and adjust for different diopters for different um, eyesight. Whether you plus one or minus one, this is adjustable. So that's a great combo. Now this particular viewfinder, the PME90, actually has a light meter in it. Now I've never used it. Maybe one day I'll try it, but I've never used it. I prefer to use a handheld spot meter um, I'm, I'm very much into the zone system invented by Ansel Adams and in black and white photography it's an absolute must if you want to do some creative black and white work. This combination is, I, I got to keep telling everybody, it is magical. Bayer Photo did not tell me um, about this and, and pay me a fee, no. I found it online one day just Seen, see, seeing if such an adapter existed. I found them, ordered it, and I was so thrilled about how well it works with this combination. I just wanted to tell everybody because I think everybody who gets one of these and a viewfinder like that will immediately see benefits and have more fun with this camera. So we'll go back inside and uh, talk about this camera a little bit more. So here it is, Roliflex GX2 Twin Lens Reflex 2.8. So why do they call it a Twin Lens Reflex? Well, one lens, two lens. This lens is the viewfinder, and this lens is the actual lens that takes the photograph. Two lenses, Twin Lens Reflex. Uh, ordinarily, this camera comes with a Waist level viewfinder, this particular one right, right here is actually a Hasselblad PME90. It is not standard with this camera. I bought myself an adapter which is right here and you can send me an email to heyboz, H-E-Y-B-O-Z-Z -E -Z, at gmail.com and I will send you the information if you so desire. So this is a prism viewfinder. PME90 Hasselblad, not the same as a waist level viewfinder. Just to show you what a waist level viewfinder looks like, I'll just slide this over here. And I have another twin lens, namely a Yashica 124G, very famous. This is what they look like. They pop up like that. The Roliflex viewfinder is the same. You look inside, there's a screen in there, that's a focusing screen, and for fine focusing, there's a pop-up lens here. Now that's really good for uh, fine focus, and uh, away you go. Put it away, you click that, do that. The Roliflex functions exactly the same, this was just for demonstration purposes to show you. Hasselblad is the same, Bronica is the same, numerous other cameras. Waist level viewfinder, well, the camera is usually 
on your strap about waist level and you look down through the viewfinder while you're focusing. A little more difficult for uh, panning shots, very difficult, but nonetheless. So back to the Rolly Flex. So here we go, the Rolly Flex. So let me just rotate this around a little bit so you can see. You can see this camera. There's two lenses, twin lens. Of course, this is a Hasselblad, not, not Rolly. This is not standard. The adapter is right here. Here you go. Little uh, piece of paper there to tell me what film I have in this camera. I currently have a roll of film in here. So here it is. Here's the focusing knob. Pretty straightforward camera. It takes a battery for the light meter. The camera itself does not need the, uh, the uh, battery. Not for the shutter. Okay, so here we go. To focus the camera, nice big knob here. You move in and out. And you can see these two lenses are on the same plate. They both move together. So you focus. The uh, uh, viewfinder, actually, light comes in this way and up to the viewfinder. This one goes directly to the film. Shutter release button right here. There's also a shutter lock. Right here, over here, I think, is that it where my finger is? Is the connection for the flash. Shutter speed and aperture are actually two little knurled wheels right here. And as you rotate these wheels, right, at, right on the top here, there's a little window for the f-stop and the shutter speed. Shutter speed goes from the B setting all the way one second, half second, quarter second, all the way to five hundredths of a second. The shutter is synchronized um, with the flash on all shutter speeds. So you can actually take a flash at 500 uh, of a shutter. Many cameras are only 250, 125. These type of cameras, like the Hasselblad, you can go all the way to 500. There's benefits to that too. Okay. Right here is a little window. You get 12 frames on a medium format uh, film. What is a medium format film? Well, here is, here is some. Kodak. Kodak 120 roll film. An Ilford 120 roll film. You can buy these anywhere, your favorite camera store or online. I buy my online. The uh, negative size is six by six centimeters or two and a quarter inches square. Pretty large, something about that size. Really good. Um, high resolution from medium format. Very often, once you've gone to medium format from 35 millimeter, a lot of people don't go back. They love the higher resolution. So what else can I tell you about this camera? The film crank is right here. Comes to a stop when, when uh, next frame is uh, up and ready. Right here is the frame counter, as we already said. Little uh, button here to test the battery for the LED light meter. Focusing knob right here. The right in there, I don't know if you can see it, but right in there where my finger is, is actually where the little battery goes for the light meter. This screws out, a little button battery goes in there. Right here, ASA setting. For your film speed, 100 ASA or 400 ASA. Very simple. These two buttons here, little round buttons here, that's actually you pull these out when you want to change the film after you open the film back. So how do you change a roll of film in this camera? Well, at this moment, I can't show you because I have a roll of film in here. But let me show you how it's done. I'll just rotate this around. You can see that. Move this strap away. So right here is the release mechanism. Rotate that, releases the L-shaped uh, film back. Now this L-shaped film back actually rotates like that, gives you lots of room to change the film. Roll film here, take up spool, no problem. Very, very simple. So why did I put this Hasselblad viewfinder instead of the waist level finder? Well, 
It actually helps me um, use the camera more frequently. It becomes more versatile. Now, why is that? Well, uh, it's very steady. You've got two hands, two hands on the camera, and then this piece, the eyepiece here, actually rests rests on your face, and you get like a like a three point holding of the of the camera. It's very very steady. Now with that, you can focus here, and you can actually pan the camera and take a shutter. You can focus and hit the shutter and expose very, very uh, easily. With the late waist level finder, very, very difficult to get sharp focus and panning. Now, the other thing I like uh, about, about this uh, type of uh, prism viewfinder, they're very bright and you can clearly see the whole screen, the whole frame, and focusing is absolutely perfect. Now, this particular one, you can use the light meter. I particularly don't. I uh, sometimes, but I'll use the light meter in the camera or I will use a handheld meter. Now, the downside of, of, of this type of camera on this particular model, if I have a gripe, is if I go back to the, uh, right here to the Yashica, you can see this opens up and you can see when you look inside, it's very open. Now, in bright sunlight, in bright sunlight, the sun gets in here on the rolly flex and actually messes up the light meter reading. You will get an, an inaccurate light meter reading if the sun gets down in the viewfinder. This eliminates that too. It blocks the light close to your face, so you get perfect exposure. Now, with the uh, viewfinder, let me go back to the... the uh, Yashica. Now, when, when, when you have this pop-up lens in there and it's close to your face, your exposure um, will be quite accurate because your face blocks out any stray light. But to be sure, for perfect critical shots, you should probably have a backup handheld meter. Now, the other thing about this camera is there is no self-timer. Now, I personally like self-timers, but you know, other famous cameras don't have self-timers. The, the Hasselblad does not have self-timers. You can actually get these um, mechanical uh, little clockwork uh, timers that screw in here, you, you set, and you know, five, six seconds, a little plunger comes out and sets this off. So that's the only downside I have. There's no self-timer. I do actually use self-timers. Sometimes I want to make a self-portrait for, uh, for somebody, um, show them how to do things, and also to, to test my equipment, like, like flashes and my light setup. So that's it. If you can... Find one of these cameras, you will uh, like it. It is different than uh, a typical SLR because you have two lenses here. But I like this camera. I'm not going to sell mine. I really do like it. Classic camera. They don't make these anymore, but they are a very, very good, well-made camera. So that's it. But I'd like to talk about something else. And uh, people have asked me, you know, what do I use for a flash gun on this Roliflex? Well, I'm a big fan of flash. Um, I see sometimes that today's photographers are not really big on flash. They just use available light. Now, just to talk about that a little bit, wedding photographers, uh, I see lots of dismal results from beautiful sunny days at wedding shoots and uh, that's because the overhead sun creates these deep shadows in the eye sockets I call it raccoon eyes now that's very easy to fix you use the flash gun now the flash gun of choice for me on my Roliflex GX is actually one of these older Mets this is the CT45 Mets now 
they don't make these anymore, but you can still get them and you can still buy the batteries. Here's the battery, rechargeable. I bought this battery from B&H. Um, they didn't uh, pay me to say that. That's just so happens where I buy my batteries. And of course these are rechargeable. You can also get an adapter and uh, use a bunch of AA batteries. I like the rechargeables. Um, these flash guns I've seen uh, on eBay are almost brand new for about $150. Give or take. These flash guns used to be the de facto standard for professional photographers. And, uh, and this particular one, this is the adapter for the Roly. Now it has the Roly name on it, but the actual model number is SCA356. And I believe Met, same manufacturer, made these for Roly. You attach this on the side of the Roly, and there's your flash gun. Now, this flash gun has tons of power. Now the thing I like about this flash gun is, is that I can rotate this head, turn it around, point this backwards, and I use this just to get highlights in the eyes. If you don't need the big flash head, but you do need some eye, um, highlights in the eyes, I use that just, just for that. That is great, just in itself, especially for portraits. These flash guns, um, they have a manual mode, which is what I use most of the time. They also have an auto mode, but absolutely superb. Now, I tested these with uh, um, flash meters as well as a flash color meter. And I got to tell you, they are absolutely spot on. I have three of these models of various ages. This one is a newer one. They, they're all, all pretty much the same, but even the older ones have very accurate um, flash output. Now, I've tested other flash guns that, uh, that were big in the day, and I'd find them to be two stops over or two stops under. Very inconsistent. But these pro flashes, absolutely spot on. You will not get a bad photograph using these. So, that's the flash gun of choice that I use on my Roliflex GX. I'm sure some of you might have some other ideas. I hope you liked the video and uh, get out there and shoot more film.